Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for the kind introduction and for inviting me to be here with all of you today. Uh, this is the first event that I've been able to participate in in over a year, and while I am thankful that we've been all able to stay connected virtually, I can't begin to tell you what a relief it is to unchain myself from my desk uh, and get out to meet everyone uh, in person. And not only that, but to actually do it in such a beautiful and historic city. It's only unfortunate that we'll be spending time in here and not on the beach in Tel Aviv. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Israel for hosting its 10th annual Israel Cyber Week. Um, for over the past decade, uh, Israel Cyber Week has been at the forefront um, of international forum uh, for unique, insightful, and thought-provoking dialogue on cybersecurity challenges that we face. Um, and I'd like to personally thank Yigal Una, the Director General of the Israel National Cyber Directorate, for his partnership for deepening the ties between our two organizations on key priorities like aviation cybersecurity and global supply chain security. Um, we are building on the long-standing uh, and strong and enduring partnerships between our two countries in our joint commitment to fight against what is one of the greatest threats to our national security, malicious cyber activity. And as every one of you knows all too well, these threats are not bound by national borders. Our networks and the critical infrastructure that they support are integrated into a larger global cyber ecosystem. The cyber threat landscape is as dynamic and forbidding as we have ever seen it. Our adversaries are diverse from hostile nation states such as Russia, China, and Iran to cyber criminals. They are growing bolder. Their targets are more consequential. Their techniques are more sophisticated. Over the past year, we have witnessed cyber incident after cyber incident, an array of attacks that has tested my organization and the entire cybersecurity community. First, cyber criminals and nation stakes alike seized on the pandemic as an opportunity to deliver malicious software, steal data, disrupt operations, target vaccine developers and supply chains. They exploited the digital transformation brought about by remote work and education, targeting this expanded and increasingly difficult to manage attack surface. At the same time, Russia and Iran launched efforts to interfere in the 2020 US election, including at times cyber targeting of our state and local election systems. While we worked across all levels of government and industry in a whole of nation effort to successfully protect the 2020 US presidential election, our adversary's intent was clear. In December, our nation was alerted to a broad cyber espionage campaign launched by the Russian government that was likely ongoing since late 2019, an incident that was largely associated with a sophisticated supply chain compromise against SolarWind software. In March, we watched widespread exploitation of one of the most widely used business applications, Microsoft Exchange. Software and capabilities that underpin our business operations and services will continue to be an attack vector of choice for our adversaries. A month later, we discovered that another widely used product, Pulse Connect Secure Virtual Private Networking Software, which was designed to allow remote workforce to securely connect back to corporate servers, had been compromised, and in this case, Adversary persistence existed through upgrade cycles where network owners and operators had thought past vulnerabilities had been managed. Over the past few months, Americans have experienced the real-world consequences of the ransomware epidemic as malicious cyber actors targeted critical fuel pipelines and the world's biggest meat processor, creating gas shortages and fuel lines across the southeast of the United States and short-term food supply chain disruptions. And a few weeks ago, ransomware operators used the previously unknown vulnerability to compromise a series of managed service providers to ultimately compromise their clients in an attack that affected companies in over a dozen countries. Each of you, I am sure, has the list of incidents that kept you busy over the past year. Some might be unique to your country, others have been truly global. But the pace and severity of these attacks has sent a clear and unmistakable message that our adversaries are increasingly turning to cyber attacks to steal our secrets, disrupt our infrastructure, extort money from businesses, sow discord amongst our populations, or any of their other nefarious schemes. Cybersecurity 
can no longer be thought, can no longer be an afterthought. It is one of, if not the defining security challenge of our age. And as our adversaries get bolder, so must our response. As their tactics improve, so must our capabilities. This is not a fight anyone can undertake alone. And that is why CISA is more committed than ever to a collective defense, nationally and internationally. Our mission is to defend against the urgent threats and hazards facing our networks, as well as collaboratively plan to strengthen our critical infrastructure and cybersecurity in the long run. Our approach is holistic, addressing all risks and hazards, but prioritizing those we consider systemic in nature. We are particularly focused on the security of our critical systems and functions, including government networks and our nation's critical infrastructure. We work with all levels of government and industry, with our law enforcement partners, intelligence community partners around the world to enable closer collaboration and in the event of a crisis, rapid coordination and response. At the end of the day, CISA strives to make stronger cybersecurity outcomes a reality. While over the past year, I'm sure everyone can agree that it's felt like we've just been putting out fires, today's fires. We also know that we need to address tomorrow's risks, driving long-term change in the broader ecosystem. We must continually ask ourselves, how can we make networks more secure out of the box? How can we ensure that there will be the right cybersecurity workforce a decade from now? What innovations do we need to really change the paradigm of cybersecurity? The answers will only come from robust collaborative planning with stakeholders of all kinds, public and private sector, large companies and small nonprofits, government agencies domestically and around the world, and the academic community. One area where we collectively need more planning, more collaboration, and more innovation is against the scourge of ransomware. I've already highlighted some of the recent ransomware attacks that we've faced, but this is truly a global challenge that requires global solutions. In the US, we've recently launched a new counter-ransomware initiative spearheaded by our White House. While it focuses on disrupting ransomware operators and improving our ability to follow their money, all of which will require close international cooperation, I wanted to touch on the efforts to shore up our defenses. And that is no easy feat, considering the nearly unlimited number of targets that ransomware crews routinely exploit. And that is where you come in. I would like to applaud the international collaboration to date particularly where we were able to quickly alert potential victims before a ransomware attack had detonated. That type of information sharing is urgent and essential. And for it to expand requires all of us to subscribe to a collective defense model. No attack, no compromise should be allowed to happen more than once. When one of us learns about an incident, it is imperative that we learn what we can and share it with others so we can minimize the scope and consequences of attacks. And when one of us learns more about a cyber criminal group, their tactics, their targets, we should help each other build better profiles and thus better defensive measures. Every entity, from international governments to the private sector, is a unique set of eyes and ears in the cyber ecosystem. I challenge all of us to continue to find ways to enrich and evolve this work bilaterally and multilaterally. CISA is committed to doing our part to make this a reality. We want to ensure that network defenders and risk managers can work together to prevent and mitigate threats to critical infrastructure. You know, as, as I was preparing to come here this week, I thought about my last trip to Israel, um, which was back in January of 2005. Um, at the time, I was working for US Senator John Kyle, um, who was leading a bipartisan delegation uh, from the U.S. Congress as part of an interparliamentary committee on national security that was co-chaired by the then head of the Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, Yuval Steinitz. Uh, Dr. Steinitz took our delegation on a tour of Masada, which he had uh, been a tour guide for when he was putting himself through graduate school. Um, and for those of you who have not been there, Masada is a fortified palace on top of a plateau in the desert overlooking the Dead Sea. And it was seized by Jewish rebels in 66 AD uh, from then, the then Roman Empire. And these re rebels had tremendous defensive advantages, both in natural terrain and fortification. Uh, but a patient, well-resourced, and determined adversary was able to overwhelm them. And their 12-year hold on Masada came to an end after a year-long siege by the Roman Empire. And today, 
we all face a variety of well-resourced, determined adversaries. And like those Jewish rebels, operating alone, even our best defenses will simply not be enough. I hope you will all join us in unifying our collective defense and fostering a cyber ecosystem that gives the advantage back to the network defenders. If the last year has taught us anything, it is that the threat landscape is only going to continue to evolve and become more complex. So whatever the threat of tomorrow is, we must begin preparing for it today. We must do it together. Everyone has a role to play in the collective defense of cyberspace. We ask that you participate, you engage, and that you share as we collectively meet these challenges head on. Thank you again for inviting me to be here and thank you for what you are doing to defend today and secure tomorrow. Have a great Cyber Week.